Uh, oh, take your time. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, listen. Sorry, everyone. Here he is. It's okay. So sorry. I didn't realize it was like this. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm having a wonderful time. Uh, I've done MCM Comic Cons uh, before. Uh, and I've actually done Birmingham before and had a wonderful time the last time I was here, which is about three or four years ago, I think. Uh, I had an absolutely great time. I really enjoy doing the Comic Cons. And th there are, you know, both met actors who, you know, come along. They, they, they don't, you know, it's like stay at home. Guys, if you don't enjoy this. For me, the Comic Con is a very, very unique experience, and I've done many of them all around the world. But for me, where can you go that has such an incredibly safe environment for children, for you know, adults, for everybody? It is such a safe place. People can dress whatever way they want, and some of the costumes are absolutely stunning. Nobody makes fun of anybody. You know, for me, sometimes, uh, one of the best moments of being at a Comic Con is when you meet somebody and maybe they're dressed up and if you met them on the street they wouldn't be able to say a word to you yeah. but because they're here they're in costume they just open like a flower to me that is one of the most beautiful things about a Comic Con and it exemplifies what I love about these events that uh, one thing in particular I don't know what the question was, but that is a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a great, it is a great answer, and it's it's true. You know, it's it's amazing. You know, um, I think it's. Uh, uh, I, I I was thinking about uh, reading about uh, um, how Supernatural has just announced that it's doing its last season. And, and the outpouring of emotions from all the fans, but also from the people doing the show, that they they announced it by the the, the, the lead actors actually doing a video to, mm -hmm. to to the fans saying you I wanted I want we want you to hear it from us first before some you know studio <laughs> sends their little yeah, press yeah. junction to junk it out, and I and I think that kind of sums up how they talk about this idea of family and and it is it's like it is. I, I don't feel like you know we come here thinking oh we're the we're the guests and they're the attendees it's like everyone feels like we're here together you yeah. know we're yeah. we're all fans of something you know that's so, very so very true and it is, it Game of Thrones feels, is like that yeah. it's, it's, a it's like an incredible family you know, people say, people you own it compare to Supernatural compared to Game of Thrones when that finally ends, it's going to be chaos, right? I, I mean, I don't think anything can compare to Game of Thrones, no. to be perfectly honest with you. I am what I would call, and what you have probably heard called, a super fan. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have seen every too. episode at least four times. I have seen Battle of the Bastards nine times. <laughs> okay, now, you know, and this is what the beauty of Game of Thrones is like. And as you said, it's, it is like a family. So when you meet someone who is a fan, you know, you're not sitting on one side. You're suddenly talking about something that you both absolutely love yeah. and that you're so passionate about. And, you know, the, all the cast felt like that. Yeah. All the crew felt like that. And when you were told you had to go, God love you, you only had one season. <laughs> but I was lucky enough to be there for five years. And the worst moment of my professional career is when the director, David Nutter, shouted out, that's a series wrap on Ian Beatty. And it was just after my throat had been cut. So my last day was my last day. And it was awful. It was actually awful. And people would say, you know, they'd say, you know, you must come down to the studio and visit us. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> because it, well, honestly, it, it, you missed it so much. It would have broken my heart. The one time I did go down to the studio was, was it season six or season seven? It was when Big Tom Hopper who's in Umbrella yeah. Academy, he played Dick on Charlie. Yeah. And he had come to Belfast to do a bit of filming, and so I was taking him out, taking him out for dinner, and I went down to the studio, and honestly, there were people come up and give me hugs and stuff, and I honestly was really losing it. I said, I gotta get out of here, guys, I'm so sorry. I was really losing it. And that's what the experience was, was like. And therefore, when we come to places like this, and we talk to other people who feel that sort of love for this show, then it is. It's, it's like a big family. It's great. Uh, are you going to be involved with the, the prequel movie that they're going to be making? I believe 
it's set a thousand years in the past. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> a thousand years a thousand years before Game of Thrones. And much as I would like to have my great 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 times twenty-five grandfather. <laughs> uh, basically the announcement was made that there will not be a single actor who was in Game of Thrones that will be in the prequel. Because it is at such a completely different time frame. And also they obviously want this show to have its own identity. Yeah, so I don't think there'll be any form of crossover whatsoever. It's quite unusual because there was another show, which I'd rather not name if you don't mind, but it was auditioning and it was based on a video game. And I can't remember whether Amazon were doing it or Netflix were doing it. But at the bottom of the, ca the casting call, no Game of Thrones actors. Hmm. Really? And that's not the first time that's happened. I'm thinking, you know, there's some pretty good bloody actors in Game of Thrones. What yeah. the hell? I mean, what the heck? Come on. But they did not want any form of brand recognition, so they said at the bottom of the casting call, no Game of Thrones actors. I guess that's because of the strong character acting in And because of the, the, the identity with the show. This is obviously a show that sees itself as a Game of Thrones type show. It isn't out yet. It's being made, I think, as we speak. <laughs> so they obviously don't want any crossover whatsoever, yeah. uh, which is fair enough. I won't be watching it, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to see in the finale? Do you have any like theories or anything you'd like to see happen? I have heard, and this is a public statement from HBO, that episode three contains the longest battle ever filmed for film or television. It is directed by Miguel Sapochnik, who did The Battle of the Bastards. I think once I see that episode, I won't care. <laughs> once I see that, my life will be truly fulfilled. Uh, I, I know that it won't be what a lot of people expect. George Martin does not do easy. Uh, he does not do easy. I know that George also built in three huge twists. Uh, twist one was actually what got David and Dan the show originally. When David and Dan approached George, George asked them who Jon Snow's mother was and they got the answer right and they got the show. <laughs> uh, twist two, without wanting to give away any spoilers, but for people who have seen it they'll know, hold the door. That was twist two. There's one more to come. I think it'll be pretty stunning. God, yeah. yeah. I mean, that whole timey-wimey, crazy, fucked up stuff with uh, Hodor. I mean, it's like, it opens... I mean, I don't feel like they've... Uh, they've explored exactly who Bran is. And if the last season does that, then, I mean, anything is possible, isn't it? So, so that's really fascinating. I tell you what I'm really fascinated in, uh, because I'm quite perverse, the, <laughs> the, the whole <laughs> dynamic between characters like Arya Stark and Jamie Lannister, because he's still on her list. And, and so characters that you've grown to love, I'm a big Jamie fan now, um, those kind of characters, when they're pitted against our favourites, that's going to be quite, uh, that's going to be quite emotional because it's like, now do you, who do you want like, to yeah. now, now who's on the right side of, of what's going on? Because it's never been easy to like your heroes, uh, mainly because they keep getting killed. <laughs> but, but, but the, the, the joy of the, of, of, of the fact that we still, can't quite imagine where yep. the story is going to go, yep. Yep. even with six episodes left. I think that is really uh, a, a testament to how how uh, shrewd and uh, imaginative they've been. Genius, know. absolute it's genius. Real, By the way, I hate Jamie Lannister. I hate Nikolai Kosovo. <laughs> <laughs> he's good looking, he's talented, he's beautiful kids, makes a fortune. I hate him. Yes. <laughs> Just putting that out there, okay? No, I, I actually really love him. He is a fantastic actor. And, you know, it, it, it's a common theme in Game of Thrones. I mean, I speak for all, all the actors that I've been privileged enough to work uh, with. Once you see an actor in a certain role, you couldn't think of anybody else doing that role. You just couldn't. 
uh, because the casting has been so incredibly good. And Nikolai, as I say, is one example of a character who, I'm sorry, at the end of the first episode, you hate him. You absolutely hate him. I remember watching the first episode with my wife, and I hadn't read the books, but I kind of flicked through it. I'd got them all and kind of flicked through and okay, yeah, oh, there's Bran, right, okay, there's a chapter on Bran. And he's climbing up the wall, and my wife says, please tell me nothing happens to him. And I said, listen, don't worry. Eh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't speak to me for a week, it was awful. I said, I didn't know. Um, and it was funny, you know, you didn't know. And the more I fell in love with the show, the less I wanted to read the scripts. Well, the result, at the start of season three, I actually phoned the production office and said, don't send me the scripts, just send me my scenes. I said, like, why? I said, because I don't want to know what happens. I'm a fan of the show. And I remember all, all the way through season four, all the, I told everybody, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. The last day of filming in Belfast, the season's wrapping. I'm doing a scene with Nikolai and Jack Gleason Joffrey in the uh, Kingsguard room where Joffrey's slagging off his uncle about not having anything in the Kingsguard book. So we finished that scene and I'm standing outside. Uh, having a cigarette, and Charles Dance walks up, and he's in a dressing gown. He says, "You a cigarette?" He said, no. <laughs> you remember Charles? <laughs> so I light the cigarette from him. Well, he says, "The little bastard finally killed me." <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're dead.